So before I install a WordPress theme, I'm just going to set up my site a little bit. This is urbanepics.com slash WTP admin. I would have to sign in with my password um, that I signed up and it's different from my hosting. I have GoDaddy hosting also, so I could sign up to my hosting account and it might have a different password, but you'll also be able to sign into your WordPress, WordPress site from whatever your domain is plus WordPress admin. It'll give you a different login and password um, that you'll need to use. I never actually have to go back to my hosting. I don't have to go to GoDaddy to sign in to edit my account. I can just go to my site slash WordPress admin and log in to get here. This is the WordPress admin um, and it also updates. So it changes sometimes when you update to a new version of WordPress and up here it'll show you the updates. It says one plugin update. So you always want to check if there's any updates available and then you want to update everything. But I won't do that right now. Also because this is hosted on GoDaddy, down here on my panel I have video tutorials, which is pretty handy because I put it in um, GoDaddy's Manage WordPress, so they automatically put these video tutorials in here. You won't usually see that on other hosting accounts, but it's useful if you're just getting started out with WordPress. However, you can also just go to, to YouTube and search for videos about how to use WordPress and you'll find a lot um, getting started and basic stuff. You have your posts where you're going to add the articles that will go to your blog where you put like news and then your pages which will be the static pages that you can add to your menu like your about page, your books and I'll set some of those up. First though I'm just going to go to settings and I'll go to general. So I can get rid of this a WordPress site and just another WordPress site. You got to change that pretty quickly. So I'm going to write urban epics. And then I'm going to say experiments in I can change that anytime, um, but for now it's it's fine. It has my email and everything, save changes. Then I'm gonna go look at writing. The default post categories and uncategorized. Later I'll want to add more categories and change this so that instead of showing uncategorized, it has a, a better looking title. And then reading. Right now the page is going to show my front, my latest posts on the front page. Later I might want to change that to a static page if I wanted to pull people straight to a certain page, but probably I want to leave it on my latest posts. And then also I'll go to discussion if you want to let people comment. And you want to check your permalinks because the standard format your permalinks is how things are going to show up up here. The standard format shows the date, and I don't think that's very useful. Um, I'll always go to the post name. So if I post a title, it's going to show the website and then the title of my blog post, which is more important because I'm going to put a lot of keywords in my titles. It's better for finding. So I'm going to change that and save it. I want to probably set up some pages. So I'll go to Pages and add new. I'll probably have an About page. I can fill this in later. Right now I'm just going to set them up. I'm going to add another one. It's going to be my books. Because this is basically a fiction site, a site for my fiction writing. I could put um, Press Kit. Some authors like to have a Press Kit where you have information for the press. I'm not going to because I don't think that's very useful. Um, I'll probably want a contact page. That's up to you. I mean, it depends. It's, you usually want to have one in case somebody wants to get in touch, but um, really you want them to buy your books or sign up to your list, not get in touch. So it's you're making choices with what you want to add. Oops, I think I just... This was my books and I changed the title. 
instead of adding a new page. I wanted to add a new page and go to context. I'll probably want, later I'm gonna want a landing page that's just my offer. So for now I'll do this, I'll say free books. I could probably change that later. I just want a page where people can sign up to my list easily, where I can tell them what they're gonna get if they sign up and try to convince them to sign up. And so if I just go to urbanepics.com, I should start to see some of these changes. And this is just a standard WordPress theme that is included. This is probably like the 2015 standard theme. So it's got the title of my blog, it's got my tagline. This is a recent post. There's al always an automatically a hello world recent post. Comments, archives, categories. This is the sidebar stuff. I might change a lot of that. And I don't like the sidebar on the left, but that's a change that'll come once I add a theme. So this is what a, a basic blog post is gonna look like. But I'm not done yet, so I'm gonna keep going. Now I have some pages, but there's no menu yet. So what I wanna do is go down to appearance and menu. And um, there's no menu here, so I'll just create a new menu. I'll say top. And then I could choose automatically uh, add new top level, blah, blah, blah. Um, or I could say where it's going to be. It's, I'm gonna put it at the primary menu. That's gonna depend on the, the theme that I put on. But for now, I can just add these pages I made. I don't need a sample page. I think that must have come when I installed WordPress. So I add these pages to the menu and save it. And that should show up somewhere on here. So here's my menu. And so if I want to change this menu, later when I install a theme, it's probably going to be on the top. But this menu, this, these, um, all of these things, when I add a new theme, they'll all still be there. They'll just be in a new place, depending on what the theme tells them to do. Um, I could probably change the header if I wanted. I don't have a logo yet, because I've got to choose a theme before I build a logo. But this is what the header looks like right now. I could upload a background image if I wanted. But I won't right now because I'm gonna change the theme soon. The other thing I wanna think about is the sidebar and that's controlled by the widgets feature. So I don't need archives, so I can delete that. Or categories. Um, uh, I might leave categories. I don't usually like comments. You don't need metadata. To add more things, more options here, you're gonna use probably plugins. WordPress also lets you, they let you install themes to change the style, but they also let you install a lot of plugins that give your blog or website extra features. So if I wanna add some cool extra feature on my sidebar, it's probably gonna be a plugin that I would search for and install, and then I would probably see it here and I could just drag it into the widgets area and that's going to show up wherever my sidebar is. So I could put a tag cloud if I wanted. Tag cloud is pretty useful. If I wanted a custom HTML code I could put text. But for now um, I might go to, as long as I'm just setting up some basic stuff, I can go to plugins again. And there's this one it has the video tutorials that came with this one because I'm using WordPress's uh, GoDaddy's managed hosting. I'm gonna try add new and I'll see what's popular. You wanna do your research, um, search for something like 2015 recommended WordPress plugins. You'll find a lot of stuff for comments or speed or improving your WordPress experience, improving the, the admin panel. So here's um, WP, WP Beginner, 20 must have WordPress plugins. So WordPress 
SEO by Yoast. It's pretty useful for keywords and search engine optimization. Backup Buddy, if you want to make backups of everything. W3 Total Cache to make things faster. Gravity Forms, I like um, another forms that's Contact Form 7. Optin Monster is pretty great if you have, um, it's for, it's for email subscri subscription. And we'll, we'll play with some of those later, but basically pop-ups are kind of annoying, but they also work really well. So if you have a website and you have a good offer after people are on your site for a while, if you have a pop-up that comes up and says, hey, sign up for my five books and I'll, you know, I'll give you something for free or whatever, um, they're a little bit annoying, but they also work really well and you'll get more signups and the signups are valuable. So they're worth experimenting with. Anyway, so you could look at stuff like this um, for adding some features, but before you go crazy and add plugins, you're gonna wanna choose a good theme because a good theme is gonna have a lot of these extra features anyway. And so the themes I'm looking at, I can just grab a couple of these. This is, um, it says not available for that one. Jetpack is pretty useful also. Um, probably some people say it's not. I like it specifically for for the stats because it'll give you statistics of who's visiting your site and how many people are visiting your site. I think it's easier for me to log into WordPress and get those numbers. It's nice to know how many people visit your site every day and where they come from and especially what they're searching for. It'll tell me you know, if they search for these keywords and then they found my site, maybe I'll want to write more blog posts that have that keyword because I know that's how people are finding me. So that's pretty useful. Um, before I install some more plugins though, I'm gonna go to appearance and themes and I'm gonna have to choose a theme. I could go to add new and I could grab one of the free themes that are here. There's a whole bunch of them. Some of them aren't that bad. If you don't wanna pay for a theme, you'll probably find something that you can use that's not terrible. This one's pretty clean and looks pretty good. Um, but you can also upload a theme. And to upload a theme, you're gonna wanna buy a theme somewhere else and download it and then upload it to this site, to your, Word, your WordPress installation. And so I don't really want any of these free themes. Um, some of them aren't that bad, but I want a paid theme because it'll probably give me more options and probably look better. This one's kind of cool. Um, it might be nice for certain types of maybe a paranormal romance. I was really looking for like a dark, sexy, sleek theme, but I couldn't find anything good enough. So the ones I'm still deciding on, this is Arwen. And part of the decisions, um, I know I want, because I'm, I'm mostly writing probably young adult, paranormal, dystopian literature. So I, what I'm looking for, with your website, you need to convey the emotion that your books are going to fulfill. So if you're writing scary horror thrillers, then your website should look kind of dark and bloody and um, eerie or supernatural. You can do a lot of that with pictures. Even if you use a simple white theme, you could still use a really big, you know, um, graveyard picture as a header. You can do a lot of the styling just with fonts and pictures. So you don't need to worry so much about like finding a theme that looks like it's got the right style. You really just need to find the right pictures you can use. That, that represent the theme and also the the fonts to some extent. So I like this one. It's okay. Um, it's clean. The other one I'm thinking about is this one, but this is probably better for like a adventure thriller and I'm not going to write a lot of adventure thrillers. It is kind of nice, but I think the text is just a little bit too big and in your face. It might be good for certain like I think for another type of author website, depending on what you write, this could be a really great theme because I'm sure you can change these colors too. So it's close. 
Um, but I also really like this one. This was kind of what I was thinking of. It might just be the pictures, but I was really looking for these kind of pictures where it's kind of the loneliness and teenage angst and longing and separation and nature. Those are a lot of the themes I'm going to be playing with in my books. So I really want some pictures that give you that kind of a feeling. And because this website's already set up with those pictures, maybe that's why I like it. It's nice that it has these share buttons down here. It's done pretty well. I think I'm going to buy this one and then install both so that you can see how they look and how easy it is to change the themes. So I'll do that in the next website. Once I've bought them, like if I wanted to buy this one, I'll just buy it. Um, once you buy it, you'll have to download it. And then after you download it, you'll have to go back here and upload a theme and choose your file. You're going to choose a zip file. And when you buy a theme from a website like this, it's going to give you a really big file that has more than you really need. Probably inside the first zip file, there, there's another zip file, which is the one you actually need. I'll show you that in the next video so you can see how to upload a theme.